Hi, my name is Konstantin Magnus. In this Houdini tutorial, we are going to project a mesh on the subdivision limit surface of another mesh. You can see on the left side that if you just naively project a mesh onto a torus, then you would get this faceted surface, which is also jaggy in some places. And with the subdivision limit surface function, you get a smooth result. Um, the functions we are going to use are OSD lookup patch and OSD limit surface. And you can, as per usual, get the file on the website. Uh, the link is in the description. So let's have a look. In the new file, we would simply set up a torus at first, dive inside, and find that the torus is not coming with any UVs. So uh, it might be a good idea to just replace it by a circle. Uh, the circle can have a few more divisions, let's say 16, and we're going to sweep it. Now in the sweep node we switch to a round tube with a bit more of a radius and maybe some more divisions, but after all we can also keep it low because in the end we want to, uh, well, project our patch onto it and we want to see uh, the facets first, so let's just set up a patch. It can be a um, circular one, and we can elongate it a bit to make it a bit more interesting and give it a edge length of 0.02. Now, as you can see, it comes with a UV uh, coordinate, a set of UV coordinates called material UV, um, but it's placed in a weird way, so let's just uh, remove it. Uh, we also do not need the patch name, but other than that, we are ready to create our own UV texture along the z-axis. So that's the representation in UV space. And the sweep will create its own UVs by activating compute UVs and normalize the V coordinate. Now we can basically match these uh, two UVs in an attribute wrangle, we connect both streams and now we should um, simply um, use our UVs uh, versus the others to get the position from the sweep. So the function for that would be UVDist and we would refer to the other input and we, if you look into the description, then it says string uv name, vector uv, and so on. So our uvs are called uv, uh, the, the other guys' uvs are called uv, ours is called v at uv, and then we would get more info back. So you can see the primitive and the vector is something we get back. So the primitive number is basically the polygon number on the donut, and the UV coordinates refer to the specific location on that polygon. So this is something we need to provide first. So int prim and vector UVW is the two uh, bits of information we get back. The actual distance is not of importance for us. Um, let's just now find out about uh, the position. So vector pause can be obtained using prim uv from the second input. We want to get the position back and we feed in the primitive and the uvw. So as soon as you set vhp to this new position, you should get an immediate result. So that's the, um, that's the torus. And this is what we would get from uh, using prim uv, which is not too impressive right now because the v at uv we fed in there is not on point level, which we change now. So now we created uh, the problem. Um, so you can see what I mean by, by uh, jagged. So this is not really smooth. And also you can see the facets from the underlying uh, base geometry. So let's just pretend for, for some uh, reasons we would need uh, 
this rough mesh and we still want to have a smooth result when we project onto it, just like when we would use a subdivide node. So this would work more as a control cage, so to speak. And this can be done by, let's just copy the attribute wrangle and now implement the more complex um, way by using open uh, subdiv. So the first function was called OSD lookup patch. So let's just bring up that OSD lookup patch, which is uh, converting basically our primitive and UV location into a patch number and U and V coordinates on this patch. So this is not identical with the polygons. So let's just try this out. Again, it's the second input. We bring in prim, we bring in UVW components, the first one and the second one as separate arguments. And then I think we should be ready to go. We get uh, in return a patch ID, patch U and patch V. So the patch, the patch U and the patch V is what we get. Now, as per usual, we first have to provide those. So the patch number is an integer and the patch U position is a float as well as the patch underscore V. So now these should be filled by the OSD lookup patch function. And this is something quite abstract. I mean, we could try and create a random color based on the patch number to get a bit of an understanding about this. These are the sub D patches and the UV coordinates on those could be maybe visualized uh, as a vector real quick. So patch U and patch V reminds us a bit of UV coordinates. So let's uh, turn this into actual world positions using the next function which is OSD underscore limit surface. And now it kind of repeats. It's again the second input. This time we want to get the position back and we feed in the patch number, the patch U coordinate and the patch V coordinate. And now um, in order to make this work, we should look quickly into the description because it's um, basically written to a vector here, which we call POS, and we need to create this first, and now within POS, we should get our world position. Now you see the smooth result here, and uh, that would be a really nice way to decorate um, our meshes, for example, Let's say you have a UV transform node and now you start to play with uh, the scale in some directions or the width or you can move it and also it's quite flexible if you, for example, deform the cage in advance. So the donut, uh, we could add a mountain node to it just to have an extreme example once you play with uh, the deformation like that, and it would still remain smooth. All right, uh, thank you for watching. And you can find the file on the Procygen website. You can support my work on Patreon. And there's also a link to uh, Animatrix uh, tutorials, which go much deeper onto this subject. Thank you.